so this I'm really excited for this. Uh, so Jim uh, Falgout is the VP of U.S. Operations at NIME. Um, Jim has been instrumental in sort of the evaluation and uh, the implementation and overall strategy behind using Replicated. And I think uh, his, pr his perspective here is gonna be really interesting. So I'm very, very excited to have a chance to chat with him. Um, Jim, I think I'll, I'll stop sharing my, this slide uh, and I'll let you pull up your screen because I know you have some things to share. Um, just, to, you know, the first question is just to help the audience know a little bit more about NIME. So can you tell us about your business, you know, who your customers are, a um, bit about your stack, you know, kind of just kind of set the groundwork for, for everyone so they know more about NIME. Oh, sure. Yeah. Let me share my screen real quick. And yeah, we'll just go through a few slides and I'll be quick just to give you an introdu introduction to NIME. Uh, we've so got really, plenty of time, uh, Jim. Don't worry. We, we, I wanted to make uh, sure that we, so, so, uh, we 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 skipped the other one so that this this is our this is the main this is the main event so I'm really excited for you to chat um, and for cust uh, other folks to hear your story and so no rush we're we're in we're we're doing great on time now so okay yeah no, no worries yeah so we're, we're at nine we're uh, really a complete platform for data science so all the way from like data discovery transforming data getting it ready to build models doing visual visualizations all that's kind of on the create side. And then we also work on the production side, right? So how do I deploy models or deploy uh, data engineering workflows? How do I monitor, monitor them and then also consume and, and interact? So if you, you know, with, with NIME, you can build these data applications, which are kind of web applications that you can access. And that allows you to push out data science all the way to consumers within your company who are not data scientists, but know, you know, they're kind of like specialists in their area. And yeah, they can actually use this, right? Um, so three big pieces of our overall software. We have that nine analytics platform. This is open source. You can download it. You can, it's free to download, free to use. And this is where you build what we call workflows. So, so it's kind of a designer, right? So you can, you can build out workflows, you can run them, you can, um, you know, do whatever you want to do. It, the, the platform is very extensive. It's built of over 4,000 nodes, lots of connectivity. Right, so uh, you can do a lot with just the analytics platform. Um, but when you're ready to start like interacting with teams, you want to do some collaboration, you want to do some automation, then that's where our what we call Nime Hub comes into play. And so right now with Nime Hub, we have Community Hub, which is at hub.nime.com. Uh, there, it's, it's software as a service, uh, and so you can go there. You can share with friends. You can we're adding automation here uh, within by the end of the year, so you'll be able to like run workflows. Uh, through schedules, things like that. But, and then Business Hub is what we're going to talk more about today. And here's where Replicated comes into play. Uh, and so this is where we, you know, we do on-premise installs and cloud installs, uh, right? And so this is uh, for, you know, multiple teams within a larger business. And um, right, so that's, we'll, we'll kind of cover that a bit today. Just a, a quick view of what the analytics platform looks like. It's very visual. It's a drag and drop kind of interface. You, it, it's very uh, low code, right? You can still do code. We have like integrations with Python and R, which are very common in the data science uh, arena. All right, again, just about, you know, kind of pro not just building data science, but also putting it into production uh, and using one single environment. So you don't have to use a, a bunch of different products to, to kind of accomplish that. And just kind of showing how we can impact data a scale the impact of data across your company. It kind of starts again, like with that analytics platform. People build really cool stuff with it. Uh, other people see it. They want to. They kind of want to jump in with it. Also, you can move into Community Hub at that point with Teams or into Business Hub. And then with Business Hub, we have just full deployment and monitoring available. Uh, ways of building data applications that hundreds of people can use. Uh, you can you can make workflows be. Uh, you can deploy them as REST APIs, so you can integrate them with with just about anything. Okay, so that's that's a, I think a pretty decent overview. And let me stop sharing. Um, yep. So just wanted to kind of introduce you to Nime a little bit. Oh, uh, Grant, I'm not hearing you. There we go. So that, yeah, thanks, Jim. Thank you very much. <laughs> a, a, a really helpful context. Sure. Um, you know, I, I think. It, it would sort of be interesting for you to tell us a bit about like, you know, the journey. I know that Nime Hub uh, is is now runs on Kubernetes, but you maybe had a Nime server before that. 
And so you were kind of modernizing your stack. Um, can you talk about the the sort of evolution of that, those changes, you know, perceived risk benefits and like, and how, how you mitigated all that and kind of what the journey was like? Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and, and it's been quite a, a long journey, right? So it's probably been over two years that we started moving towards uh, Kubernetes. Our previous product was um, was a single node application, uh, and it was a, you know it was great. It did it did uh, it helped our customers a lot. There was more of a department level kind of kind of server, right? It only can handle so many so many uh, users at a time, uh, and so we were getting a lot of push from our customers to move towards like running multiple servers and they were like, hey, why can't we just have like one thing <laughs> that all of our, you know, thousands of users kind of uh, go to. And so that's why we decided, okay, we need to move, move up platform. And we decided on Kubernetes because we didn't want to like pick one cloud platform and just go all in on that platform. And Kubernetes seems like, you know, it's cloud native, right? So it seems like um, it, 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 and that was kind of what pushed us towards Kubernetes. Um, so it was risky, right? So we had to um, do move our development team over to microservices. Operations team now had to learn about uh, Kubernetes. We also use like Argo CD for deploying in Community Hub. Uh, so a lot to learn there. And customers, uh, our customer care, you know, our sales team, uh, they had a lot of worry about complexity, right? They heard Kubernetes and they just, oh, I've heard horrible things about Kubernetes. And, and so it was a lot of just kind of working against that, that sort of preconceived notions. Um, ways that we really worked on alleviating those risks was, uh, and this is ongoing, right? Because we're still kind of in the middle of it, but really focusing on training and communication, right? And uh, finding kind of key people in like the sales team. So we found uh, a couple of really deep techies that were really interested in diving in and we uh, kind of moved them into more a solutions architect kind of role. And uh, yeah, they've been really helpful in working with customers and kind of alleviating a lot of that uh, kind of fear around this this uh, new technology, you know, so to speak. So I, I think that really helped. Um, yeah, so that that's kind of some of the ways that we try to work around those risks. Yeah, and I guess for replicated, uh, you know, I think you mentioned like it was a, a, a kind of a monolithic server install, and then did you have a cloud platform at that same time, or how, how did it, how did it work? Then? Uh, no cloud platform at that time, okay. and that's kind of where Nime Hub came for we, uh, came from. Like we we saw this need of of uh, of our customers to do more collaboration and collaboration with people who didn't even use server. Server is more of that automation kind of platform. Um, they just had a lot of data scientists or people who were interested in data science, and they used Nime Analytics platform on their desktop, right and they just kind of want to take it to the next level. They want to start building communities and things like that. And that's that's where we built the community hub. And from community okay. hub, we were like, okay, we need to we need to upgrade our our overall architecture. So that's kind of where we came up with taking what we've done with community hub, which was based on Kubernetes in the cloud, uh, but also you know making that available to our customers. The first time we showed off community hub, all of our um, kind of more enterprise level customers said, we love it, but we want it in our, <laughs> we want it in our network under, behind our firewall just for our people, right? So that's kind of where that started. Great. And so it, so it sounds like you sort of, uh, you know, got some experience with Kubernetes before you started distributing it to customers by introducing it into your hosted community hub, probably helped your team feel a bit more comfortable with it. And then, exactly. and then you were kind of looking for a way to distribute that to um, to your customers who wanted it a self-hosted version, one they can control. Exactly. And that's sort of when you found Replicated, is that right? Right, as we were kind of making that journey from Community Hub to Business Hub, which like you said, we'd have to install in, in customers' um, you know, data centers. Uh, that's where we started looking for uh, solutions for that. And actually we found Replicated before we even released Business Hub. And so once we started right. working with Replicated, right, uh, we kind of built it in from from the beginning. So our first customers that had Hub uh, were replicated installs. Great. And so, you know, what were kind of your expectations of uh, these these different customers who maybe had, you know, kind of as Chuck was alluding to, a variety of Kubernetes experience and and uh, expectations? Like, what you know, how did you how did you kind of prepare for that? Uh, so we, you know, using, um, well, we have a, a, so first off, we have a big disparity in, in customer kind of uh, deployments. We have really small customers who are maybe a small five person team all the way up to enterprise customers who have, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of people uh, using our software. So we had to kind of try to juggle between those two, uh, which is quite a, quite a uh, demand. 
Uh, for the smaller customers, embedded curl, you know, single node, uh, replicated install has, has been great. So it, it's just really helped uh, get that going very quickly. Uh, we can do proof of concepts, you know, and, and take an hour to do an install and have it all up and running. Uh, and, and, you know, there's, there's a little bit of, of expectation with Kubernetes that, you know, this is going to take days to install. It's going to be super complex. So taking all that complex, complexity away was huge and great seeing some of the things you guys were talking about today, right? That helps us, helps us even more. Uh, for larger customers, um, I, I think we were a little naive when we first started building our, in, you know, our deployments in, in thinking, oh, we have, to, we have to provide ingress, we have to provide uh, OIDC you know, providers, so we use Keycloak, we have that embedded within our stack. Mm. Uh, but when you walk into some of these enterprises, as, as uh, someone earlier was alluding to, it's, it's, it's all over the place, right? Some are pretty open to anything, some of them are really locked down. And so we had to kind of find our way in, into doing that. And, and um, Argo CD came up a few times with, you know, why don't you just hand us your Helm charts and let us do the install, let us manage uh, that for you. So seeing that again today with the demo with GitOps um, was, was really interesting. Uh, so it's kind of been all over the place and we're still, we're still kind of working through some of that complexity. Um, one thing that, that we found though, like, okay, Ingress was probably the first one we ran into because we, we deploy our own Ingress and a customer was like, hey, we have that already. Don't, don't deploy your own. Okay, so we had to go back and, and we found that in several different places. So having like the flexibility of the config uh, within Replicate it was super mm. valuable, right? So we could do an install and they could just click uh, don't, don't deploy Ingress. And then we would give them a bunch of options that you know, helped us integrate with their Ingress. Um, so Replicate really helped uh, with, with that. And so we really appreciate that, that flexibility. Yeah. Ingress storage. Some of these uh, add-ons can be can can add up some complexity to these deployments in terms of different clusters and different requirements. Um, so you know, I, and just 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 be honest when you're when you're looking at a vendor, particularly looking at a vendor that's that's going to be helping you with something so kind of uh, instrumental in a lot of your largest customer environments. Um, there must have been some hesitations, right? There must have been some objections. So I guess you know, what objections did you hear from? You know your team at large when you're thinking about kind of adopting replicated, and, and how did you overcome those? Uh, yeah, good question. So um, from the kind of leadership team, uh, there was really a lot of uh, it's an installer. Why do we have to pay for an installer? Uh, kind of idea. And so it was just really once we went through the kind of proof of concept with the uh, sales team at replicated, we learned you know so much more about it, and and um, also helped us kind of form a story of why this is important and where the value comes from within Re replicated beyond you know, installs. Um, and so that, that really helped them. And I think over time, there was still some, some skepticism, but as we started doing installs and we got good feedback from the customer care team and uh, you know, things like support bundles and you know, one-click updates, uh, all, all of those features uh, really helped. And I think the vendor portal was important in that also, mm -hmm. in that we could see uh, we can see kind of a little bit of what's going on with customers. Like I'll, I think um, someone was demoing some of that today. Uh, that that information is really that data is really um, uh, powerful, right? Because we can we can see who's who's using it and who's not. Uh, we had a few times where we were surprised with uh, people churning, customers churning with Nine Server, right? And we were like, wow, we thought you were using it. We thought you were happy with it. Uh, so for us, this is like really valuable to be able to see that and, and be proactive with our customers. It brings value to them also. So once we kind of got into the, those first few installs and, and uh, got feedback, uh, that really, um, I think, set aside a lot of the uh, skepticism maybe that the leadership team had. Sure. Okay. So overcoming uh, skepticism with the leadership team, really about showing value, um, you know, particularly beyond the installer, I think is a, is a common theme, right? Because installation can be fairly commoditized. Are there other kind of ways that you, that you think about the value that you get from replicated? Uh, yeah, I think uh, you know, we talked a lot about the software, uh, the replicated software. You've seen a lot of demos today on, on the uh, kind of things that you guys are doing, which is, which is really great. Uh, so I think a lot of the value, at least from my perspective that I see is not just replicated, you know, the software, software but the replicated company. Uh, the people that you have, um, how um, how just uh, with their breadth of knowledge that they have in the Kubernetes world uh, is really amazing. And so that initial support we got through doing a pr proof of concept with the sales team, 
uh, was really valuable. We didn't want to do it. <laughs> we we kind of were uh, pushing back a little bit, but we were really happy we went through that process because actually we learned a lot uh, about the software. And also, you know, someone who's who's working with it day, day after day, uh, they just have these little hints and, you know, things that you can do to, you know, uh, we, so we just learned a lot going through that process beyond what, you know, what, what the software does, but also I think the people really made, made a difference and the support team, we've been really happy with the support team. Uh, you know, all software has bugs. We understand that, you know, we make software ourselves. Ours, <laughs> so not ours. Yeah. Just a few here and there. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, it's been really no, easy. No, no intentional bugs. Those are those are no intentional bugs. No, of course yeah, exactly, not. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but it's been really great working with the uh, with the team, and uh, and it's really nice having uh, Aaron's our our sales rep rep. He's here in Austin. Uh, we've met and we've met with you also, and yeah. that, that's really helps getting that kind of personal you know touch also. Yeah. No, it's it, it has been great to be able to visit your offices, which are not too far from my home. So uh, pretty cool, particularly in the in the post COVID world. <laughs> yeah, that's unusual. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I think it's interesting to think about like kind of that value and, you know, that you get and talk about the vendor portal and being able to kind of get some telemetry and understanding. Um, do you think there's also value that your end customers, right, that sort of folks that are running Business Hub that they get because you're using Replicated? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, for them, I, you know, no one, everyone thinks that install should go smooth, but when it doesn't, uh, it's a problem, right? So uh, smooth install is is huge. Uh, that's helped helped us and and, and smooth upgrades. Uh, so being able being able to have a customer have insight into like what's what's in the um, what's in the um, kind of pipeline as far as upgrades uh, and and being able to see those and manage those themselves has been really valuable. Um, it was a pretty rocky <laughs> road before. Uh, with our previous product and doing installs, um, and so having that automated and and being able to to have customers kind of manage that process themselves uh, saves us a lot of time, but but also provides them a lot of value. Uh, the, we talked about support bundles. Um, that's you know being able to support this uh, with without having to jump on a call every time. We can just say you know and we and customers kind of learn that right. We're having this problem. They'll create a support bundle and upload it before they even kind of get in touch with us, right? Uh, so they they see the value yeah. uh, in that. Um, like we we talked about before, uh, customers who don't really uh, are, are maybe not that familiar with Kubernetes, uh, having the uh, curl install embedded, um, those smaller kind of small to medium customers, right? Uh, for them, that took away a lot of the the um, scariness, right? Of, of of you know dealing with Kubernetes. Um, so seeing you guys even move closer to you know almost you know, not having to even know that Kubernetes is there is yeah. really positive, right? So I think that helped alleviate a lot of their um, anxiety over uh, over this, you know, super complex thing that maybe is not as complex as they, they thought it was going to be. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I guess like, you know, in terms of kind of the go-to-market side of the business and, and your field teams, um, you know, what have you been able to do to kind of enable those field teams to, to really, you know, deliver a, a Kubernetes-based application and support that, and you know, kind of get customers comfortable with it, versus kind of this like more traditional monolithic application that's based in Java that I'm sure, you know, people probably felt a little more comfortable with. Like, how did you bring the whole team along? Uh, yeah, and we kind of mentioned that a little bit earlier. A lot of that was kind of communication and training. Uh, the sure. cloud, you know, the cloud ops team that kind of came up to speed with Replicated and and learned that, and then we started doing. Uh, kind of training classes uh, or maybe like workshops with them mm. and help them walk them through the install. And then once they kind of walk through that first install and could see that, okay, like Kubernetes got installed, our application got installed, this took less than an hour, everything's up and running. Um, that's kind of cool, right? So th that helped them um, see that this was uh, doable and it wasn't this great mountain that they, they needed to climb kind of thing. Um, but so yeah, I think that just communication uh, and training and kind of getting them over that initial uh, initial fear and and we you know like I said before we we kind of built up this solution architect group and continued mm -hmm. to build that up and they're they're kind of taking on that role now and, and able to do that with other uh, people within the uh, within the sales team. That's great. Um, you know, did, I know one thing that I remember us talking about in a meeting a while back was. You know, you you do some 
you know, like a lot of software vendors list their applications in the cloud marketplaces, right? So maybe the AWS marketplace and AMIs have different kind of ways to list. I know we were talking through some of the licensing challenges of using replicated in those environments. And this is, I don't actually know the answer. Did we ever figure out how to, how to actually enable you to use uh, the sort of replicated, you know, delivered version of the application in those cloud environments with our licensing? Yeah, we, we had a lot of discussions around it. There's nothing like built into replicated today um, yeah. that, that we're doing. So we're going to, what we're doing now is we are going to use, you know, replicated for those AMI builds. Um, especially, you know, the COTS piece is, is really valuable. And sure. and before I mean, we've had our server product on, on AWS and Azure uh, marketplaces for years, uh, but doing updates was really hard. Um, so mm -hmm. they basically had to go to our website and then kind of figure out how to do an install. And a lot of them really like the, I just, you know, click a button in marketplace and I have an instance, I don't have to install it. I know you guys followed best practices, uh, but then we threw in, you know, upgrades in their lap and they had to, log into the machine and do all this complicated stuff right so um cuts helps get away you know get get away from that and uh, so we definitely wanted to use uh, replicate it for that part as far as licensing like we're um you know if you if you're starting up an ami in marketplace uh you're running in a, in the customer's um account and Great. so we don't we don't have a lot of control over what that looks like so we'll try to re reach out to replicate it we'll create a customer for them if we don't think one exists already we'll be able to download the license. If we can't do all that, then we're just going to use like embedded license. And then okay. uh, in working with their sales team, we just kind of came up with a way of, you know, reconciling that every month. It's going to be a little bit manual to begin with, but uh, the information that we get from the vendor portal uh, will help with that. And, we, and of course we can use APIs for that and, and try to automate all that as much as possible. Yeah. Sounds like a good area for us to maybe look at investing in a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, what I guess what else would you like to see? Are there other areas that you're that you, you think that we could that we could improve? Well, I would I would have said uh, something like compatibility matrix, but you guys are working on it already. So we're super excited about that. And thanks for the demo today. That was uh, really fun to see. Uh, yeah, we, you know how it is. There's so many different um, distributions of Kubernetes, all these different versions, uh, and so being able to just spin up. Um, you know, we have customers using AKS, EKS. Some starting to look at GKE. So being able to spin those things up and, and do some testing with our application just gives us a lot more confidence that it, you know, it's going to work in, in those environments. So that's huge. So I appreciate, I appreciate that. Um, Thank one you. Thing, yeah. um, we're, we're really excited oh, about yeah. that. It, I, I just, I'm, I'm equally excited and I, you know, it, it, it's been great to see kind of how quickly your team has taken that up. And, you know, we, 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 uh, we think there's a lot of value it can, it can bring, you know, when I, when we were talking to customers about it, I think it can actually introduce a step function change in the reliability and sort of stability of their applications, because you know what we've noticed is a lot of uh, our a lot of the best vendors are you know are doing some testing, but no one's really kind of digging that deep into the the full matrix of of different combinations. And you talk about you know versions and and uh, distros, but you know also there's all the different kind of ingress combinations and you know mm -hmm. all. And so we're, we're, we we want to get into those pieces as well to really give you confidence that your end customers are going to be successful and and running and upgrading your application. So I'm glad you pointed that out. No, it, yeah, we're, we're very excited about it. I know SJ's on the call. He's, he's on yeah. our team. He's on our cloud platform team also, and he's kind of dove into it uh, pretty deep. So yeah, we're, we're, we're very excited about it. Uh, just a few little things like we kind of bump into like with SB uh, uh, control, um, you know, when you get a, a support bundle, uh, all our developers use, use open lens, right? So they <laughs> they would love mm. to be able to use open lens to look at that stuff instead of having to do cube control kind of, kind of uh, oh, that's command. interesting. That's a really small thing, but yeah, yeah just one of those things that, that people have mentioned. <clears throat> and like in the config options, we talked about that earlier, uh, which is really flexible, just a little bit more support for different data types, you know, things like that. Mm. So you can hear from the things that I'm saying, there's no big, like huge features that we look at and go, you know, we see a big hole here. Uh, some of the things that we talk about with, you know, a cloud marketplaces would be great. Yeah. Um, but I'd uh, love to see some of the innovation you're doing. I'm, I'm glad I joined actually to hear about the Helm install that, uh, yeah, it definitely kicked off some ideas uh, with us because we have had some of our larger customers say, hey, just give us your Helm charts, right? Uh, yeah. But we don't want to lose the goodness of replicate it. And so uh, definitely glad to see that that happening. Yeah, that's exactly it, right? We, we, we sort of, 
today I'd say five to 10% of end customers are saying, Hey, we'd actually prefer a Helm chart. And so we, mm -hmm. we just want to make that possible and say like, Hey, it's the same the release. You can just, you know, install it with Helm. You can use COTS. You can use this embedded installer. It doesn't really matter. You can use GitOps, whatever else it might be. So um, that's our goal is to be able to really, you know, support and serve that full spectrum of end customer requirements. So Jim, thank you very much. And we went a bit over, um, I really appreciate you being here and sharing kind of your experience with uh, our community and with our team. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing to hear kind of the success that your business is having. And, and we're, we're really proud to be able to be a partner and to help you uh, help you grow even more. So um, thank you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Jim.